Hello and welcome to a brand new series. This will be the first video in the Java series. Basically this series will, series will be about Java programming and I'm gonna show you and try and learn you as much as I can. And you might think why would we do this when I already have an Android channel? Well basically because Android is built upon Java. So if you have a good understanding of Java programming you will be, you will be able to create good applications and uh, games with Android as long as you learn the basics of Android too. So first of all I'm going to show you how to install and set up Java. If you already have a working Eclipse and you can program for Android already then you don't have to follow this tutorial since I will only show you how to install Java. So go ahead and skip this video if you already have it set up. If not, go ahead and follow it. So the first thing we need to do is, we need to grab a JDK, Java Development Kit, which is really easy. Just Google for JDK and you will get get taken to the oracle.com website, which are the owners of Java. Ask me later. Now, why is Java so good? Well, basically because it can run on many different platforms. For example, if you go to Windows, it will most likely work on Mac and Linux too, for example. The only requirement is that all of the all of the computers who run your application needs to have the Java real-time environment kit installed. If they do not, they will be asked a message to download it, I believe. But in order to actually program for Java, you need to download the JDK, Java Development Kit. And that is what we're going to do now. You want you want the latest one, which at the moment is JDK 7. I think I'm still using JDK 6, but there's not much difference and you will be able to follow tutorials easily. And now download for your correct computer. For example, I downloaded Windows X86, I believe. If you have Linux, go ahead and download one of these. If you have Mac, download that one. Make sure you put it in a safe place that you can remember quite easily because you're going to need that path file later on. After you have downloaded this, you, there's two more things you need to do. First of all, you need to set up your environment variables. Now, I don't know how to do this for Linux or Mac, so search for setting up environment variables on those operating systems. I'm only going to show you on Windows 7 which is what I'm using. So if you got Windows 7, go ahead and go into the control panel and then search for system. System and then edit environments variable. And then environment variables over here. Now what you need to do is you need to look at the variable path and double click on it and you will get taken into it. Next thing you need to do is add some text. If you already have text in here, go ahead and add a semicolon like this after it. And then you need to actually type in the path file to the JDK. And I'm going to show you. Go into computer and wherever you have stored it. I have mine inside program, I believe, and at Java. Inside your correct JDK folder, for example 1.7. And then go inside the bin. You can just click over here to get the path file into this folder and then you can just go ahead and copy it inside of your path file variable over here. Now you can test this pretty fast to see if it works if you have done correctly. Oh sorry. Go ahead and click on the Windows icon plus plus R and you will get taken to run application and just type in CMD. Now to see if it works, you just type in Java C, short for Java Compile. And if you see a text like this and you don't get an error, then that means that you have done everything correctly and it should work when we download Eclipse. Now the next step is to get an ID, which basically is an interface where you can program and compile your code. For example, I'm going to use Eclipse, which is the most common one, I believe. And you can also use it for Android programming. So just go ahead and Google for Eclipse. And go to the download page. 
And once I again just go ahead and download the correct operative, operative systems, for example for Windows. Actually they might not... Okay, they do have for Linux and Mac, that's good. Let's go ahead and download the correct version. As long as your commanded Java C works, it should work automatically when you have downloaded Eclipse. So basically this is what Eclipse looks like. You will get a nice startup menu. I'm gonna see if I can get it too. You have a YouTube 2 which creates a new workspace which is basically where you store all of your projects, your current projects. I'm going to talk more about the clips and how to use it properly in the next video. So once again if you already know of all of that you can skip to video 3 which is where we're going to start the programming. So this is probably what it will look like for you. So yeah, that was all for this video. In the next video I will show you how to use Eclipse. So thank you for watching. If you like my channel and my videos, please give it a li like and subscribe to the channel. It would really help a lot. And maybe even share it. So bye bye. Hopefully I will see you in the next video.